hour pre presentation on uh, fraud and how we can avoid it. Now, the people are who are going to uh, try and attack you with it, what they want you to think, how they want you to, to uh, uh, think their way, and you can be a little bit armed ahead of time. That's the big thing. Can you okay. discourage them so that they'll stop calling you? Well, <laughs> that, that's a lost cause. You know, uh, well, we'll see you some of the reasoning behind that. My name is Bill, April, okay, and I volunteer with the, uh, the AARP Fraud Watch here in Vermont. I've given uh, some talks like this all the way from Killington all the way up to Canaan. So I've seen a lot of different folks, a lot of different issues, but it all boils down to one thing. When they get scammed, they want to know how to prevent it. And this is one of the things we're going to do. We're going to talk about fraud trends, the Congress playbook, Talk about prevention and resources. We have that Connors playbook over here. Yeah. This is the Connors playbook, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. So we're going to get on here, and first we're talking about fraud trends. Okay. Is it too much with the door open for a competition? I know I speak pretty loud, so I should be able to. Okay. Good. Okay. The top scams in Vermont, imposter scams, the computer tech support, and debt collection. Those are the three biggies that we're seeing in Vermont. Now, imposter scams are just what it says, somebody calling up and they're saying they're one thing, when in fact they're not that person or that entity. They call, they say, hi, I'm Mrs. Uh, I'm Mark Anderson from the IRS. Okay. When they're not from the IRS, or they're calling from Social Security, or they're calling from your bank, or they're calling from any place. And they're saying there's a, maybe a, they're just saying that you're, it's your grandson, your granddaughter. Okay. This is an imposter scam. Well, how do we know it? Well, they're not going to tell us who they really are. That's the problem. Computer tech support, when somebody calls up or is on your, on your computer and says, oh, uh, you've got a problem on your computer. Well, we have to fix that. And we've had people call up and they say, uh, call up on the phone and say, you've got a problem with your computer. I said, well, my computer's off. Oh, but well, we've, we've had records of that, okay? We have records. Your computer sends us an email telling us when you have a problem. It doesn't. I've worked over 30 years in the computer industry, okay? These guys do not call up looking to fix problems. They've had enough problems to fix all their own. Okay. My wife has also worked over 30 years in the computer industry, and neither one of us okay, are going to expect to get any kind of phone calls from Microsoft or Apple or anybody else. So if you ever get a phone call from somebody saying, hi, I'm from Microsoft, or I'm from Apple, and you've got a problem with your own machine, or I'm from some other tech support company, it's a lie. Okay. Do not accept that information. Do not accept that call. It's a scam. The debt collection is another one, where you have a, a case where somebody says, oh, you've, you've uh, won this money. You say, wow, how was that debt collection? Because they're going to say, oh, uh, you, you might have won uh, $75 million in this Jamaican lottery. So, oh, wow. And that's just, that's just going to be great. I can solve all kinds of problems with that. And then you think about it, and it's OK. Then when they start saying, Oh, but to get that money, because it's from Jamaica, we're going to change the coin. They don't use the same US dollar over there. That's going to cost you some money. Okay. Or if you get a call from the IRS, and they say, well, you have to uh, take this uh, information over here, and you have to send us some money. And yeah, you owe money. Or could be that you say, OK, well, we have a check for you. And the check, we'll, we'll mail this check out to you. Just give me the information, and we'll mail the check out to you in a couple of, in a couple of days. And then once they know you've cashed that check, okay, it's a phony check. They'll call you back, and they'll say, oh, but I'm so sorry. The, the check we sent you, it was supposed to go to somebody else with your same name. The middle of this was a little bit different, maybe. Okay? And uh, then they'll say, well, we need to have that uh, $300 or $400 back. Well, where's that money going to come from if it's a fake check? It comes from your account. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to debt collection. 
It could be a charity thing. Tell oh, yeah, well, we, we, we heard that you have uh, put some uh, uh, forms over here that said you have, uh, you're going you're gonna to give some money to this charity. Okay? And oh, all well, okay, so that's that debt, debt collection. Or whether it be calling from a, from a bank. There's a lot of different instances of, bit of debt collection. Okay. So now this is from about, I think it's two, 2016, where we found out that 21 million people had lost $19 billion. Now, the, the problem with this is that this is only the ones that we know about. Just, just think for a minute. If you lose two or three or four or five thousand dollars, are you going to stand up in front of these friends over here and say, "Hey, I just lost five thousand dollars"? No, nobody's going to do that. That's how we know this is only the tip of the iceberg. Okay? There's a whole lot more than that that lost more money from emails, from websites they go to, from phone calls, you name it. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Talk about identity theft. Identity theft is having uh, any one of these um, Medicare cards or uh, Social Security cards or driver's license, any pieces of that information okay, is part of your identity. And all of that together can be a complete identity, uh, identity theft or just a partial identity theft. Okay? Does anybody here have their Medicare card with them today? You do? You shouldn't have to carry that. You shouldn't have to carry it? Nope. No. Because if your, if your purse is ever stolen, okay, now they can use your card and they can go and, and charge up back braces and knee braces and all kinds of things. So the only time you ever need to do that is when you go to the doctor for the first time and that doctor does not have your Medicare card. But the second time, guess what? They don't ask for it, do they? Because they already have it in their computer. You never want to carry that with you. You never want to get their money back. Okay. They'll never get that money back. They put towards it. Well, they'll they'll get money because they'll charge it and it'll come out of your account. Yeah. Because they have your number. Yeah. Well, that's right. When you give it to you give them permission. That's right. So you want to make sure you don't want to carry that unless you're going to a if you go to a specialist. Maybe you got a bad knee and they say, okay, you have to go to this specialist for that bad knee. Okay. Well, he may or may not have. Your, your Medicare card at that point. Okay. Then you okay, I want to bring it. But after that, never bring your Medicare card along with it. You know, okay. we always have little bill calls that, that everybody, different credit cards. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. wouldn't let mine ever yeah. leave the house. Now we have, we have boxes over here, and inside the boxes, we have these little uh, containers over here, and these are safe for uh, any kind of uh, credit cards. So you can take those. Okay. And uh, some of the new credit cards that come out, and they'll have a wireless connection. And these new, the brand new credit cards. And with a wireless connection, they can have a, a, a scanning thing. You just tap something. You see it on TV where they just tap on them. They get, get your information. Well, those will, will protect those cards if somebody has a device nearby to steal your information. You know, um, that reminds me of, I, mean, one, I was born many years ago. Since then, I don't use credit cards in restaurants at all because a lot of waiters have those things that take it. When they take it to, to uh, you know, uh, process it, they have a, a something, I forgot what it's called, a disc, uh, some sort of a thing on their belt that they can automatically get the information. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, probably 99% yeah. of the cases it's not any problem, but that 1% you ever know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I always take yeah. cash at restaurants. So the identity theft is what is really, really a driving piece over here because with the identity theft, someone's identity is stolen every two seconds. So we've had a lot of identity stolen in just the time I was talking about that. Now here's an example here. Free seminar identifying all the scams, register, send name, address, and social security number. Okay? You never want to respond to anybody asking for social security number. You shouldn't even have to carry your card. No. Okay. At this time, we all know that number. We've given that number out to them so many times. We should never have to carry that card around either. Okay. That's very, very valuable. It all worries me because um, you're going into a store, or I'm going to say, I'm hiring people to work 
in those places. Yeah. And the scary part is they may look, and they you'd like to think that they screen them so well. Yeah. That they're not ever gonna, it's never gonna come back to haunt you. But how when you go to the hospital, the first thing you have to do is go over your records. Right. Um, you know, when you go in your social security, is everything usually they'll say is everything the same. Right. And you'll say yes. But it used to be every time you went in, you had to they right, say, they'll go through and they'll verify yeah, certain pieces of address, they, birthday, so yeah, forth, correct. And you trust them because you know the hospital hired them. But do we know? No, no, no choice. But the Social Security card in Vermont, uh, they, they are not required to have your Social Security number on file. If they ask you, you can say you just decline. Yeah. Yeah. If they have to run a background check, they have to have that for it. So the, if, when they run a background check on somebody to see if they're a citizen, like, then they have to have that social security number. Yeah, of course, but for patients in a hospital and you're not, right. you're not required to, even if you're asked, you just say, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. So this over here, this is an example of someone who uh, who is a, who's a victim. And um, Jean was living in a house with her, with her uh, husband over there, and Jean got a phone call from a man telling her she had won $7.9 million in the Jamaican lottery. Now, that immediately said, wow, that was, that, that's just, she said, well, I didn't buy a ticket. That was her first response, and that's a good one. I didn't buy a ticket. She says, well, after they have a drawing, and all the people who uh, have won, says, we couldn't get a hold of anybody who won, so we have to give the money away. That's the law in Jamaica. So he says. Well, in fact, that's not the law in Jamaica. And this guy isn't, doesn't have anything to do with Jamaica. Okay? He may not even be in Jamaica. Okay? It's a scam. He's trying to say, okay, fine. And this is the case where, uh, oh, yeah, well, you've got $7.9 million. But because we have to transfer that from the Jamaican money over to the U.S. money, it's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. Oh, then we also have to uh, get the money transferred from our, our bank over here to your bank over there. The bank has a fee. That's another $500. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. All this money, all these transfers, all these conversions go on like that. She lost $30,000. Who do you trust? Do you? Exactly. You, you trust people, and after a while, you think, well, uh, all the things that I, that I said seem to be right. Well, the way he answered seemed to be right. And they're very convincing like that. And it wasn't, she didn't lose $30,000 right away. It took her several weeks, quite a few weeks before, well, this fee and then that fee and then this conversion. After a while, she said, wait a minute. She went ahead and she called uh, the state police and she called uh, the other, other, other FBI and the Federal Trade Commission and so forth. And they got involved in this whole thing and they, she lost $30,000 and she, I don't know if at this point over here where she was in the, where, where they were in the country or out of the country, but she lost that, a lot of money. Now we're going to see one little story here. Just sit at that table right there. Lunch at Bill Bowles Barbecue outside of Atlanta. The ribs are hot, the tea sweet, the table's full. Local stockbroker Steve Sampler is taking a client to lunch, advising on the menu. Come around here. Will you this part of the water? country is fairly conservative, and that reflects Steve's own advice to clients. Build wealth safely, nothing okay. too risky. That's it. But Steve does not take his own advice. Steve recently lost $40,000 in an oil and gas scam, purchasing unregistered shares in non-producing oil wells. If it can happen to me, uh, it, it can happen to anyone. He's right about that. Steve is a licensed professional stockbroker, smart, with two degrees, accounting and marketing management. But he was taken in by a con man with a telephone. Of course, they did say that they really hated for me to miss this opportunity, and it was, uh, it was, it, I would probably never get this type of opportunity again. The con used an old trick, scarcity, telling Steve there were only a few units left to invest in, and he had to move quickly. He'd make 10 times his investment. Steve did not bite at first, but the calls continued, week after week. 
as I began to talk to him more, and, and of course he knew. He knew basically he was wearing me down. Steve began to know, and like the salesman, a big mistake. Everyone has a tendency to trust people. Once you get to know them, particularly, you, you want to trust them. You don't want to think bad of them. It's not going to happen in the first call. It's going to happen after months and months of doing business with that person, that you're going to be endeared to the personality and share intimate things about your life with them. When somebody starts taking you down that personal lane and asking you about memories and asking you about what makes you tick, they're doing what I'm telling you we did, I did, which was set up my arsenal for the clothes. The salesman I dealt with, I knew all about his family, his wife, his children, where he lived. Steve sent $20,000 in and received official looking securities and did some due diligence. I talked to the district manager in Dallas. Oh yes, there are 15 wells out there. It just, everything was just right in place. So he sent in another 20,000 and it was gone. The shell company liquidated, shut down by the authorities. He's your friend, but then one day he disappears. Still, how and why does a professional like Steve fall for this? The older I've gotten, the more, um, the more risk I'm willing to take for some reason. Uh, but you know, I, I think what that stems from is I'm not where I thought I should be at this point in life. Oh, I'm trying to hit home runs. Steve, like so many investors, was trying to play catch up, an all too common tendency among mature investors. He wanted to hit one out of the park. Home runners strike out more often than, than the base hitters. And uh, that's what happened to me. And that's what'll happen to anyone else that uh, is not very careful, especially today. Okay. He fell victim to trust. Now he did as much as he thought he should do for due diligence. But when he went to contact people, he contacted the people that this scammer told him to contact. Yeah. So they go back, yeah, his, and then his, they, they went ahead to the computer like I've got over here, and they printed up special security notes that filled all the right blank. Yeah, he was used to seeing this kind of, it made sense to him. And they're drawing Now, money. for somebody else, they would have left it $20,000 richer. But because they saw this guy was an investment counselor, secure, oh, well, we're going to take a little bit more out of this guy. And sure enough, they went ahead and, no, a second $20,000 payment. Okay. Now we're going to get into the Conrad's Playbook, which is this little booklet over here. And this is something that uh, the, the folks at the uh, uh, Fraud Watch Group put together. And you see all these different tapes over here. These are audio tapes and videotapes that the Fraud Watch people have gone to convicted felons who are in prison and asked them, how did you do it? Why did you do it? So they've got all that information in here as far as the kind of things that they did, why they did it, and so forth. And we'll see some more uh, examples of how and why they did it on here. But that's what they, uh, we referenced the Conanus Playbook. So this over here, you're going to hear some uh, undercover audio recordings of these guys uh, in jail as they made phone calls or as they made uh, recordings to other people. Okay, people, these, these had these things saved on their voicemail. And the first few of these uh, messages that they leave on voicemail are gonna be nice and congenial and so forth, but then you'll notice a change in the flavor of the messages. What'll happen is that as these people continue to call somebody, then the call, the flavor of the call is gonna change. So you'll listen to that and you'll see what happens here with that. If you don't want to make up your mind right now, that's where I come in. I will make up your mind for you. Anyway, uh, I said I would not call unless it was a rare and definitely undervalued situation. Are you familiar with the two and a half dollar gold Indian series? This is enough money for you to go to your grave knowing that you went and did the right thing and you can go and meet God with a clear conscience. Now, what do you want to do? Are you 
you'll never, ever be anything. You're going to your grave a loser. A big loser. You see how the flavor changes as they continue to call somebody? Yeah. And if they don't get the, the beginning uh, information from somebody, then they have to call them again, get a little more information. And they get more familiar with people. Okay? As that goes on, then if, as, as people get more reluctant, then you get these kind of messages over here. Okay? And when he says, I'll come over and burn your house down, if you ever looked on the, ever go on the computer and did a Google search and just put your home address in, you can see your picture of your home right on the, on the internet. Okay? It's very, very easy. Because Google has gone around to try and make it easy for a lot of other people for other reasons to drive around and they, everybody's house has a, has a picture on the internet. You, you put in your house address and they'll show that the, uh, the car will have stopped in front of your house, taking a picture, and they do that several times a year. So if he's in India, or if he's in Pakistan, if he's in the Philippines, or he's in Puerto Rico somewhere, and they, they uh, call and say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn your house down. Okay? He'll describe, or she'll describe, that, oh, this is your house, you've got the gray with the purple shutters, you've got two big pine trees out front, you've got the split rail fence, your garage is on the right side, and you go, oh my God, he's been here. But guess what? He's in some other country, more than likely. But they'll tell you that, and you'll, you'll get nervous. Because that's how they want you to think. That's how they want you to, to feel about that. Okay? And we're going to look at this... Uh, the three different uh, other cons they've talked to, for instance, is Rocky Smith, Bart Chamberlain. We'll see more of him in just a few minutes, and Stephen Michaels. The tactic of authority is a strong persuader in many scams. The con artist wants to appear to be someone you can trust. I'd be on the phone with the victim, purporting to be the president of a bank, and uh, in all actuality, I'm at a payphone uh, craving cocaine. Bart Chamberlain is a convicted telephone con man. Over the years, he claimed to be various vice presidents, bank managers, even FBI agents. And because he set up the authority from the start with all the trappings, all the fancy titles, he's able to then rely on that to tell the person what to do. I'm with American Recovery here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The reason for the call, sir, through, through action from the U.S. Attorney's Office in conjunction with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, uh, subsequent seizures of property and auctions therein. So I guess the reason they, they followed the instructions is because they thought that they were talking to someone in authority, a bank president, an executive vice president of a big corporation, uh, a U.S. attorney, an FBI agent, whoever it was, it was a person in a position of authority. And they didn't, once they, if they believed that I was who I said I was, and they, they, would, they would act accordingly. Chamberlain would take on any role he could think of to help him make his scams more believable. Congratulations, you've walked away with the biggest award we've ever given away. Charlie Miller here, Executive Vice President of, of Principal Marketing. I want to congratulate you personally on your award. Mr. Jones, my last, my last name is Jones too. I'm Mr. Robert Jones from Mobile, Alabama. I'll be coming out to your house personally to take photographs of you. Congratulations. Even jail walls didn't stop Chamberlain from projecting authority. After his arrest, he used his telephone privileges to make more calls from payphones inside the jail. The $20,000 I told you about, I did it while I was in custody. How did that work? That's tricky, isn't it? Well, basically, I had, uh, I, I called the gentleman up, uh, collect. I told him I was, a, a, uh, I was on my weekend warrior duty as a U.S. Marshal at the local jail. Mr. Jones, this is Jim O'Neill here. I'm calling you collect down from the county jail. I'm down here this weekend doing my, my weekend warrior duty as a U.S. Marshal. The reason for the call and the, the urgency that necessitated I call you over the weekend collect is that I've spoken to our corporate headquarters out in New York and our accounting firm in Los Angeles, and it's my great pleasure to let you know that by next Tuesday or Wednesday, you will in fact receive your cashier's check for $225,000. Now, there is one final amount of business that I have confirmed through our general accounting office in Los Angeles. I want you to write this down. We are going to need you to go ahead and send out $20,000 to cover you for everything that, that prior to this point has been overlooked. And I had him send uh, $20,000 in cashier's checks to a third party who from there handled it for me. A scam artist, the economic fraud criminal, will take any role they need to take to get you 
in a role to do exactly what they want. Authority is also projected in the sophisticated mailers sent out by scammers. The mailings look very official, very real with their certificates and seal. Now, a lot of the publishers' clearinghouse, that's a very common one right now, is the publishers' clearinghouse of calling up and saying, you've, you've won this, you qualified for that. Most of those are a scam. The ones that come in the mail, eh, they're usually okay, but they, they're still, it's the kind of thing where they want you to buy a lot of stuff before, and, oh, well, the sweepstakes is a few months away, but they don't tell you when it is. Oh, you, you've got to, you know, buy these things over here for your kitchen, for your bathroom, for your home, whatever it might be. Okay. Now this fellow over here, we saw Jimmy, and uh, again, he's in prison, and uh, he's going to tell you what they did, how they did it. These are dangerous people you are on the phone with, okay? Make no bones about it. I am a dangerous person on the telephone. If I choose to be fraudulent in my practices, there is nothing that's going to stop me from taking lots of money from people, period, in the end. And there are many other people just as dangerous as me. And the, the point is that they, they seem to have no qualms about it to say, I shouldn't do this, I feel bad about doing this. This is how they make their money. Some people can use this talent to go out and sell cars, to sell real estate, and be legitimate. These guys, I need the money, whether it be for drugs or just greed, this is the way he does. And they'll talk about uh, getting people under the ether. Years ago, when we went to the hospital, oh, you have to you have your tonsils out. They gave you ether, only the gas mask, right? Well, now they've got more complicated uh, chemicals and so forth, and they give you gas, they put you out for, for an operation. But the thing is, they wanted you to get uh, to a point where you wouldn't feel any pain, so they put you under the ether. Well, now, the word ether, in this case, is uh, referring to a heightened emotional state, whether it be the call from uh, the alleged grandchild or whether it be the IRS. Okay, as soon as you hear it getting caught by IRS, boy, the hair in your arm stands right up. You get nervous. Okay, you don't know what's going to happen now. Okay, or you get something from a from a bank and they're going to give you some money, or a lottery wins. Okay, heightened emotional state. That's what they want you to feel. Now we're going to get into uh, listening to Jimmy again. The crush or the kill is emotionally driven. It's not logic. If you apply logic to this concept, it's no. I'm not going to send you my hard-earned money. I don't even know who you are. I know you from Adam. When I, when I wrap that in tons of emotion, that blurs. The logic goes out the window. The emotion kicks in. Now I have endeared you to me. Now I'm no longer the predator on the phone. I'm just... And that's how they want you to feel, and that's what you have to be aware of. So when you do get these phone calls, and you, you hear the story, and they, they start asking you questions and so forth, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to endear themselves to you. Okay? They trust them. Right, so you build up that trust, exactly. So we're going to the, the Connors playbook, so we're going to talk about persuasion tactics. And the, the per persuasion tactics go over a lot of different areas, but basically they're going to use these tactics to build up trust. Okay? So we get into is, uh, all these different audio tapes that we've made of, of these convicted uh, people here in the States. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of access to people in the Philippines or in India or Pakistan, but we, we got people locally who were convicted of these things and we found out this information. They're talking about things like phantom riches, okay, profiling, scarcity, source credibility, fear and intimidation. So we've seen this over here on those voicemail messages they left with people. Okay. Source credibility, we've seen like as in Bart said, and you notice how when he showed those three little clips of Bart talking about, he had three different voices, three different accents from three different areas of the South. Okay. He had recognized that, he said, this is a clue. I've got to tell people all this information, but I've got to tell them something that they feel comfortable with, familiar with, so they'll think I'm the guy from the bank down the street. Right? And fans of riches, we saw how Gene will, will certainly go ahead, oh, I won $7.9 million. 
wonderful. Yeah, I don't mind for $7.9 million. I don't mind giving you a few thousand dollars over here to convert the currency. Okay? And profile, we haven't talked about that too much. Profile is when, as they talk with you about uh, this thing, then they find out more about you. They find out uh, where you live. Now, they'll see an address, but they don't know. They don't know that 802 was all of Vermont. Very few of these people have any idea of geography. But they'll call them, well, where do you live? Oh, is it a rural town? Do you live in a city? Do you live in a condo? They don't know. They'll, they'll try and get some information about you. And then they'll try and get information about uh, your family. Okay? And they'll build up a profile. And as they build up a profile, they say, oh, well, I can attack this area. I can ask about that area. I can, oh, I can, let's stop it over here. I'll, I'll ask a few more questions about this. Okay? Whether it be somebody whose husband or wife has passed on, uh, how long that was, oh, they'd be so sympathetic. You never know. Okay? And the idea of the scarcity, and again, that scarcity thing, something where somebody has uh, offered you something, look, it's only good for this day. A lot of times we'll get the uh, uh, things in the mail, and they'll say, come to our financial seminar. And it'll be over here, we'll offer you a free roast beef dinner or uh, shrimp delight. So, wow, this is pretty good, free dinner. Okay? So they send you that. You call up and say, oh, yeah, when is it? Oh, that's over here. You're over here at 6 p.m., over here at, the, at this restaurant here. I say, wow, this is great. And they got all these people, 20, 30 people in the back room. Okay? And they've got a nice dinner. They all serve it up. Wonderful. This is great. And they start talking about different finance stuff. Well, when the, the, the scarcity comes when he says, now, I'm only here for one day. Red flag right there. I'm only here for one day. And he says, I've got these options over here on the table, and I want you to consider them. He's not going to push you to go buy them right now, but he will at the end of the talk. First thing off, is he registered in Vermont? Does he have an office in Vermont? If he's not, off it, he does, if he's not registered or have an office in Vermont, okay, he can't sell anything in Vermont. Okay. But a lot of folks don't realize that. They assume because he spent the money to get here to offer all those people free dinner that he's got the money, that he's part of Vermont. Not necessarily. You want to make sure, okay, where are you, where are you registered? Okay, where's your office? Okay, can I, can I see that office? And if you want to look at if you've got a phone with you or you've got a laptop with you, you know, type in his office, see what, what it comes up with. Okay. If he says he does have it, often he'll do, but oftentimes they'll say, well, I don't have it here. I'm working through this other brokerage firm over here. Say, Whoa, wait a minute. Thanks for the dinner. I'm out of here. Okay. Red flags all around. So here's a case here of Phantom Riches. The grand prize is 25000 cold hard cash. The Florida lottery is up to $30 million this Saturday. If you join our club, you know, 4,800 tickets, that's 4,800 chances to win, and they split it among this, this club. Well, who else is in the club? Is it anybody down the street that I might know? Or are they all in Florida, or are they out in California, or are they in Texas? Or, okay, you don't know who, he just said there's a, a club of these people are in there. Profiling. If you don't mind my asking, how long has your husband been deceased? Now, he'll follow that trail for a little bit. Let me ask you something. It sounds like you have a wonderful home there. How much is the mortgage each month? Then they'll start following the finance trail. How's the bank? How are the people over there? Are they, are they good tell us? What kind of hours they have over there? He's not going to do anything with that bank, but he wants to know if that's a good bank to do business with. Okay? Again, try to build your trust. Scarcity. We only have four years left of this investment offer, so you need to make a decision soon or you'll miss out. He's only here for that one day. This is a limited time. It's a scarcity thing. Okay. Only 24 hours left before this offer will expire. You have to act now. You never want to make a decision on any kind of investment on a very short-term notice. That's, that's a definite big red flag. Okay. In this case over here, we show these coins. A lot of times they'll say, well, there's only 27,000 coins of this ever minted. 
Okay. Do they serialize coins? I've never seen any serialized coins. Yet if he says there's only four of these left, how does he know? <coughs> he doesn't. He's just telling you what he wants you to hear. Scarcity. Okay. So it's credibility. You get a call from somebody says, I'm a senior vice president here with an MBA and certified to deal with seniors, and I believe that's exactly the right product for you. And they're going to tell you, you can, you can make 6% in a year. You say, wow. If I'm lucky, I'm going to get you know, less than a half percent on my savings account. The checking account will probably get nothing. Uh, and, a, and a CD, if you're lucky, you might get maybe one and a half, two percent for several years. Okay? And here they've got a product over here that'll, that'll put you right in good. good and like, like uh, first uh, Steve was saying, the investment counselor, he was saying, you know, I'm at my age, I want to make sure I can get that little extra push put me over the, over the edge. So I'll have plenty of money left over for when I, I'm not working anymore. Okay? So that's source credibility. Now, here's the fear of intimidation. This is what they would say. Once I get hold of the victim, I would let them, never let them go. Even when they told me they were out of money, I said, go out and borrow the money. This is a sure thing. This is how they want you to think. Urgency, okay, scarcity, thing like that, fear and intimidation. So we're going to go through some practice over here, and you'll see where they talk about uh, different persuasion tactics. Now, John, back in 1860 from the Philadelphia Mint, there were 22,675 of these coins minted. Of those 22,000, only four have survived. Only four! For God's sakes, just okay, that's something that's a scarcity thing, and it's a thing where look, it's only gonna happen this day. Well, how many other people is he calling besides this particular fellow here? 16, 17, 18. And could it'll, it'll go on and on and on. Okay, so that's that's a, a scarcity thing. Okay. And that's uh, he's from Stephen Michaels, we saw him earlier. Okay, persuasion tactic. Saw that? And that's a scarcity. So we'll go back over here, we'll see another one. The following is a paid advertisement for John Beck's newly updated free and clear real estate system. The average home in America now costs more than $219,000. But you're about to learn how you can start buying homes like these for just a few hundred dollars and own them free and clear with no additional monthly payments. Hi, I'm Michelle Boudreaux. The homes you just saw and the many examples you'll see throughout this program were all purchased for literally pennies on the dollar using the amazing secrets found in John Beck's free and clear real estate system. The secrets behind John's system are strategies that most people don't even know exist. Unique strategies that take full advantage of today's real estate market to purchase homes all across the country for as little as a few hundred dollars. And John's strategies don't just apply to homes, they apply to all kinds of real estate. For instance, you could buy home sites ready to build on in lakefront communities for as little as $10. And listen to this. The purchased for amount shown for each property you'll see today, like this home that was purchased for only $521.56, is the amount paid to own each property free and clear with no monthly payments. Coming up, you'll get to meet John Beck, the creator of the amazing free and clear real estate system and learn how you can start using his system right now to purchase properties all across the country. Too long to make it over. Less. It was too loud? Yeah. Okay. But this is this goes to show here how they were put this was a real commercial on television. She didn't go, she was a hired actress, just okay, well pay me a thousand dollars and I'll say this. And he's the one who went to jail. And this is very common where, where a lot of these people develop this situation where they'll have all these books and things you have to go, much like uh, President Trump and his Trump University yeah. that eventually folded. 
Yeah. Okay, and he had to pay back a whole bunch of people a bunch of money because they bought this stuff and they weren't getting the same kind of return on investment that they were promised. Same kind of a, a thing, just a lot of research, a lot of books, a lot of presentations, no, uh, no they, money coming back. You can back. see how they are so excited as they are. Exactly. Like, and, and they try to get you in that excitement thing, like, oh, we're, we're, so, we're so into that you're going to be a winner. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Too terrible. little work. A lot of the properties are properties that are in really bad shape. Okay, you're going to buy it from a bank under foreclosure, yeah. then you're going to have to do a lot of work to, to repair them to current standards. Okay. Did Trump pay that money back? I thought he never did. He ended up going to court and, and fighting it, but he ended up losing, and he, he ended up having to pay. He did reimburse the people who were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how many years ago was that? Uh, that was only just a few years ago, wasn't it? I mean, it was after, after the, the election. Oh, well, he's a good seller, too. I yeah. Mean. <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm Adam West. Oh, I wish I'd had one of these in the old cave. It's called Easy Link, and it's from Pantheon Holdings, your business opportunity leaders. Easy Link is a public access internet terminal, and soon you could be seeing them everywhere. They provide all these services and products, and they could all spell profit for you. I never carried half that stuff in my old belt. Give EasyLink a call right now, and tomorrow you'll get the full info kit plus the money report on DVD. EasyLink sets it all up and helps you find the best locations. EasyLink could be your ticket to the good life. You don't need to be a superhero to be super successful. This could be the ultimate turnkey operation for you. For your free info kit, Give the folks at Easy Link a call right now. See, that's the only device they ever made, and they came out literally months before smartphones came out, before Apple had their iPhone. So if you look at all the things that it was doing, all these smartphones do it today. And they did it just a few months after this came out. But it was a, the point was that this was all uh, news that was coming out about potential iPhones and things you can do on the internet. So they brought this out. They will find people who come out. They'll buy this stuff. They'll invest in the and the device didn't exist. And we'll tell them, okay, you go ahead to University Mall, go ahead to Berlin Mall. They go there. They can call one another and have a webcam video. They can go over here. They can do shopping while they're in there. They can find out all about uh, what's going on at, at uh, People's Store in Marsville. They can find out what's going on at or at Sears over here. And, and the whole nine yards. It'd be great, wonderful thing. However, okay, it didn't exist. But you had to buy all the stuff. You pay into it. You get the help from the company. What what malls to go to and so forth. Okay, who to contact. But this again is using trust. Okay, we all know Adam West from Batman. Did he ever say he was Batman? No, he didn't. Okay. He mentioned his belt. You tell these people, well, I guess I'll have to speak to my daughter or, or somebody to check out some of what you're saying. Then they really start ramping up like they want to get more information to you directly. Right. So you forget your daughter and you try to get involved in exactly. the family thing. Yeah. Whether you did. Yeah. But this over here is, is using the idea of uh, a trust over here for somebody we know, or know we knew years ago from being on the, the Batman show. And uh, he didn't say anything about uh, uh, being a superhero. He said at the very end he said you don't have to be a superhero. He didn't say, like I was, that was implied. He didn't say, uh, you have to carry things up. He said, he carried it and carried things like it on his belt. And again, implied, didn't say anything about being a superhero character. Uh, he, he didn't talk about uh, things like that, but he, he implied all that. So we're, we're trying to tie in this trust issue, okay? So I'm gonna look at another one over here. This one is not a true story. It's one that's made up, but to show a lot of elements of what they want you to do. Okay, so we'll look into uh, this one. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that I have never seen anything that we have ever offered here on the Smart Shopping Network that is getting the response we are getting tonight for the Miracle Shim. Look at that. Isn't that attractive? And if you have a chair or a table at home that's a little tipsy, and I bet a lot of you do, there is no better product you can find than the Miracle Shim. Now, look at this uh, chair here. A little tipsy, isn't it? You probably have one like it. But you just slip one of these little beauties right under that chair or table leg that's not quite touching the floor as well as the others, and voila, problem is solved. These are the same shims used in the White House, uh, Buckingham Palace, the Taj Mahal has lots of them, and all of Donald Trump's homes to every single one of them, and he has a lot of them. You know, Princess Diana, it is said, would not sit at a table until it had been specially leveled with miracle shims. She had a guy with her, went with her all the time. He had a bag full of shims. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. You cannot find miracle shim in the stores. You just can't. They're not available in stores. They're not available from anywhere but right here, right now, from me. And they're not going to be here long either, believe me. I'm told the hickory now is really selling like hotcakes. So uh, let's take a look at the counter and, whoa, my goodness, over 12,000 sold just since I've been on the air. These sets sold out completely last time we had them on the air, so I'm not surprised by that. We have got uh, Bernie from Normal, Illinois on the line. How are you, my friend? Hi. I just called to say that I love my miracle shims. Do you now? I just bought three more of them tonight. Whew, three of them. Yeah, and my neighbor's trying to get through to you right now to buy some. Well, you better hurry, because I'm told the cedar just sold out. I bought one for my wife. Our anniversary's coming up. Well, your wife has herself one thoughtful husband. Yeah, well, you know, it sure beats buying a new dining room set. Well, thank you, Bernie. And, you know, he raises a very good point, folks. New dining room set? several hundred dollars for only five easy payments of $9.98. As the kids say, that's a no-brainer. But I'm, I'm being told now the Miracle Shims are all sold out. They are all gone, except, you know, for this one here under the chair. There the, oh, wait a minute, I just thought of another one we've got right under well, the Well, this chair. isn't made up. This is not a real product, okay? This is not a real product. This was a, a story that they made up just for the, just to. Yeah, you know, this, was, this was just a story to show the different kind, the elements of the compressed time you would have or the, the, uh, the uh, decreased price, uh, scarcity, all of these elements. And here was a fellow who was a, a trusted spokesperson for this. Yeah, but for something like that on television, let's say, how would you know, how would you be able to differentiate whether it's a scam or whether it's legitimate? Well, that's a good point. This, this case over here was one that we just that they made up. But if you went to the Home Shopping Channel and bought something out of there, yeah. okay, they have a pretty well-established channel that they have constant uh, kinds of products coming through computers and dining room sets and, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things like that. So all of these things that they have, okay, they were a relatively trustworthy line. But this case over here was showing how ridiculous it could be. He was saying Donald Trump has them. Princess Diana had them. And so Taj Mahal has them. Oh my God, yeah. You better have one. Yeah. But I was just going to show the, the idea of scarcity and then the things coming back. So we, as they were showing the, the, the decreased price, the, the quantity over here, uh, this thing is all, it's going to be gone in a matter of minutes. Okay. We only got 324 minutes and only got the, 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 the price over here. So it's a great deal. So there's a lot of elements to this, what they were trying to present and obviously here being the trusted spokesperson. Well, what's that, your account, checking account number or whatever, they charge you for a hundred shims. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, instead of just forty nine ninety, they want you to get involved in the order. And right. the order, you can't give out the information they need to go and put your account. Because they're breaking up the issue of trust. Donald Trump had them, uh, Princess Diana had them, Taj Mahal had them. Well, if they're good enough for them, it must be good enough for me. Yeah. The fellow over here called says, I've given to my wife for her anniversary. Well, I guess he felt they had some value. Not much, but this is the point. Okay. Was that something real or something they tried for this? This was something we made up. Yeah, as an uh, example of what these guys, their yeah. promoters, make you fall into being right. given out the information. Right. The software. 
So it's just an example to show how these can be carried away with uh, yeah. different products. So here we're going to get into mention the prevention strategies. Never make a buying decision to heighten emotional state. If they say it's only here for today, fine. I don't want to hear about it. Okay. If it's a good, good decision, it'll be here the next day or the next day after that. Okay. Ask questions. You've got to find out more about what this is that's so special. Okay. Can't be well call the Taj Mahal and say, do you have miracle shims or do you have this? Or, but you have to ask questions of other places and see if anybody knows anything about this. Read about the product before buying. You can go to the library and look up, look up this information here. Okay. Develop a refusal script to stop unwanted interactions. When they start calling you and calling you and calling you, you have to be able to say in your head, how do I say no? Okay. Well, we'll look at this. When I hear you're not interested. Right. So you've got to be able to really be aware of that. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! <laughs> no! No! Now, that's Steve Carell from the office. Yeah. And this was an example of somebody fixed on saying no. Yeah. Okay? Here's another refusal script over here. Hello, hello. Hey, Seinfeld. Uh, you remember Susan from NBC? Of course. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you. This is Grim. Oh. Hi, <laughs> okay, Susan. Tell, tell me what? Wow. Well, I... I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. Hello. Oh, gee, I, I can't talk right now. Why don't you give me your home number and I'll call you later? Uh, I'm sorry. We're not allowed to do that. Oh, I guess you don't want people calling you at home. No. Well, now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay? He knew how to say no. <laughs> okay? So all the prevention strategies here, we go. Protect your social security number and personal information. Okay? Make sure you only give it out where you have to give it out. Monitor your bills and financial accounts. When you have your checking accounts, your savings accounts, any kind of investments, make sure you can, you can monitor that stuff online. And when you monitor that, you just don't want to be able to go to a website and put a name and password in that anybody else can have. Okay? You want to be able to have what they call two-factor authentication, such that when you log in, and you put a password in, then it's going to come back and say, how shall we make, uh, give you this, this other PIN number? Either by an email, or by a phone, or by a text. And they'll uh, automatically send you whichever you choose. So if you've got a text, you've got a phone, boom, you've got a text, boom, okay. And it'll tell you what the code is you have to put on the screen to see your accounts. Okay, that's two-factor authentication. Whether it be a phone number or... I say, okay, well, call me at my phone. And they'll already have that phone number listed mm -hmm. because this is your bank and your, your information is in there. So you call and say, okay, fine. And put the name and your password, okay, on the call you up and say, okay. And they give you a recording that will repeat it three or four or five times. And you type it into your to the web page and you get in and you see your information. Okay? That's two factor authentication. That's really the, the way you want to do that. And you want to monitor your bills and financial accounts. Uh, the reason why you want to monitor it, because if somebody does get some of your information and they're able to go ahead and, and uh, uh, impersonate you, then what you can do is if you monitor that, you can see, like every couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and if you wait a four weeks, when the statement comes in, they've had a whole month working as you, rigging up bills that you're going to end up paying. Okay? So you want to check it every week or every two or something like that. Okay? Do your homework before investing. If you invest someplace, you look at HTTP smartcheck.gov. Now, here is an HTTP. Any place that has any kind of financial information has got to have HTTPS. Okay? The S should be on there for security. Okay? Watch over your query reports. Go to annualquerryreport.com. There's a phone number there. You can get uh, this information over here. 
we have these sheets, and everybody should take one of these sheets on the uh, front and on the back of these sheets, the information about uh, where to go for uh, uh, information about uh, your, your credit reports, where to invest, uh, who to report problems to. Okay. All of that is, is uh, on that, that list. Okay. Uh, protect your pins and passwords. And you say, well, to protect your pins and passwords, uh, you have to have a list. You know, I have a list on my computer. I don't call it password. I call it something else. Yeah. And I have it uh, on here. They also print it out every once in a while. Because these passwords should be changed mm -hmm. every few months, six months, seven months, whatever it might be. They must be changed. Okay. And uh, the pins, the password, if they're changed, you, know, you have to just go print out your list again. Okay. Now, whether you keep it uh, on your computer, whether you keep it in the printout, maybe you have a little booklet to make a difference either way. Okay. Protect your information online. So when you go online, make sure if you go someplace and you're going to see a, a message from somebody who's oh, you know, about a part-time job. Okay. Part-time sounds, sounds interesting. And you have this fill-up form. When you want to fill the form up, they're going to request it you give them all your, your information. Not going to be a, a valid place necessarily, so be careful of that. Okay? Protect your mail. Now, when you say protect your mail, that's just the surface mail. That's after you go to opt out pre screen, so you're not going to get stuff mailed to you from a car dealership or a plumber or an electrician advertising his business. Okay? You go to opt out pre screen, go to this, this uh, number over here or DMA, Direct Marketing Access Choice, okay? It's going to prevent, uh, by getting your name listed, they're not, they're not going to send you that stuff, okay? Sign up for the Do Not Call Registry. Now, the Do Not Call Registry is only good for legitimate businesses because the guys who was trying to scam you, they're already illegal. Why would they worry about a Do Not Call Registry they're going to call you anyway, okay? But it'll, it'll prevent some of the extra calls coming to you from legitimate businesses. Uh, double check references. If somebody gives you a reference and they say on an email or they give you on the phone call, uh, just call this guy over here. Well, that's a friend of theirs, somebody they want you to, to, to trust as well as you trust this first guy, okay? So don't, don't double check the references with ones that they give you. Call up somebody else. Call a Better Business Bureau. Federal, call up Federal Trade Commission. The um, AARP.org Fraud Watch Network, we've got people, uh, numbers on that list again, that are uh, there, uh, volunteers who have all this information. If you have any questions, they'll be certainly happy to help you there as well. Okay? Verify charities. And here's uh, four different websites over here, charitywatch.org, uh, charitynavigator.org, give.org, guidestuff. These are all uh, the organizations, and all they do is verify charities. Well, you know, I've got a lot of great experience with charity navigator, but they don't only verify, but they uh, tell you what the, um, the salaries are. The yep, yep. We'll see so an here. example over here, exactly. And it shows over here, it's kind of read, uh, tough to read over here, World Wildlife Fund. And it shows their address. And it shows uh, who's the chairman over here. And it shows the present CEO. And it shows other information. You get all this information over here. This is all very good, interesting information. But it helps to verify who it is that you're going to be getting money to. Okay? And in this case over here, it goes to uh, accountability and transparency score here. And then over here they have what they call a, a financial score here. So if both of these factors are very trustworthy, then you'll find over here is where that charity rating will be. So it's very easy to figure that out. And here we have our Fraud Watch Network. And here we have on there, you can go to a list law enforcement alerts for whatever place. Now if you go on this place over here, you can say Vermont. You can put in the zip code for uh, whatever town you're in, and it'll show you the state 
and all of these triangles are reported scams. Okay, that we don't have a sheet for that. Okay, but if you go to this Fraud Watch Network, you'll be able to see on there. They'll talk about the map, and the map will be over here. It shows you the map of the whole country, and you say, okay, well, I want to look at this zip code. You put the zip code, and they'll put in Montpelier, Vermont, or you put in is it Burlington, Vermont, whatever it might be. Okay, and if you just put down Montpelier, then there are other Montpeliers in the United States, and they'll give you a list of what other states have Montpeliers. So you, you just choose one that says Vermont. But they'll show you all these different, these are all alerts. In fact, if you wanted to, there's a spot over here on the right side of this that we don't show on this screen over here, but you can actually submit alert of something that has happened to you. So with this alert that you fill in over here, somebody will verify that, and then they'll, you'll find that when you click on any of these triangles, you'll find that alert will be there. Okay. So this is a relatively up-to-date thing. And this is the phone number we have for the Fraud Watch Network, 877-908-3360. And that's on that sheet over there. Okay. So if you take this sheet, of this, these over here, that gives you all the information. So any other questions that have, have uh, are brought up? That I mean, the big thing today, it's sad for our grandchildren and whatnot that aren't aware yet that because they got a little bit more than what people had back when I was younger. Right. And you think they could be so easily um, scammed. Right. Uh, without even having yeah. like Well, as far as the, the size of the group, of people who get scammed. The younger people with everything on their smartphones, they're the ones who get scammed the most. But the people who get taken for more money, it's the older crowd, yep. okay? All of our seniors are ones who are there, there. We typically have more money that's um, easily, easily, easily taken yeah. by these scammers, whether it be investments, whether it be uh, pensions, whatever it might be, we may have more money than the younger people because obviously we've, we've saved, we've got pensions, we've worked for it, we've got other uh, avenues of investments, things like that. And when we have that, okay, and we're always trying to get that little bit extra to put ourselves in a more comfortable spot. Oh, what happens if I get ill? Do I have long-term care? Oh my goodness, I gotta think about that. Okay, with all these things, so if I only had another 50,000, Another day, yeah. So when you're trying, like, like Steve was saying in the beginning, he had plenty of money, he just wanted to get that little bit extra. And that's all it takes. Yeah. I was wondering something you said earlier. Uh, if, if they send you a check, you know, you're, you're inadvertently uh, involved in some scam, they send you a check and you deposit it, they can't get your, uh, your bank account number from that, can they? No, they can't. But what they'll do is they'll come back and they say, I'm sorry, that check was bad, uh, or was it going to the wrong person, right. or something like that, and they say, you need to pay us back. Oh, I see, okay. okay. And that, that money would then come out of your account. So, oh, okay, so I so far. The, um, why did the, um, the guy in jail, especially any other con artists, why did they agree to be, uh, that would hurt their business, wouldn't it? It would hurt the business, well, but they're already in jail. They don't have no business. Well, they're, they're <laughs> out of jail, but they're going to get out of jail. I'm sure it's not a life term, obviously, so they're going to get out of jail. Right. They, 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 they will get out of jail at some point. Or, or, or did they have an agreement that they would get a shorter uh, exactly. that this That's oftentimes yeah. uh, we talk yeah. with the, 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 the attorney general's office for yeah. our various people, yeah. and they'll come back and say, look, well, I can offer you a reduced sentence to a certain degree if you want to help these people out from the AARP fraud watch. Yeah. And so they say, okay, we'll sit down with them. Yeah. And a lot of it, too, is boasting. This is how good I was. I've got different voices for different parts of the country. But they never paid for these videos, right? They? No. Okay. No. So a lot of it is, is boasting, yeah. saying, you know, listen to how well I can do this. Okay? So if the guy's got a certain talent, he wants the people to, to show off his talents. Yeah, I'm in jail, but... It's only for a short time. Yeah. I'll call somebody else, and I'll sound like this, or I'll sound like that, or I'll sound like something else again. 
Well, here's our town and accents might not have Exactly. Very, That's very his point. So, realistic. again, this guy over here would call a certain part of the country yeah. and he knew, okay, if I'm going to call Texas, I'm going to sound like Texas. If I was going to call uh, South Carolina, I'm going to sound this way. Right. Yeah. So, we'll be here again and um, we'll be here in December and then again in January. Yep. And we'll talk about some other areas of scams and frauds on uh, those two other dates. And if you want to invite other people to come around and say, yeah, come on in, this is interesting, yeah. you'll, you'll find out small things well, you don't know. And people that are um, a little bit ignorant of all the facts that they can be scammed on. Yeah. And that they're not um, taking it serious enough to think how that's going to affect whatever it is that they get a hold of. Right. And, and it's gone before you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, now they say the local police, if you file a report, they will say go to the local police and have them write up a report. Yep. Okay. And they track it by that. Like I come from Waterbury, there's no police in Waterbury. Yeah. Okay. So we have to go to state police. State police say go to local police. Well, I said, wait a minute, there's no police in Waterbury. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. Well here, fill a form out and we'll take it. And uh, if, it's, if it's a moderate amount of money, they're not really going to be able to do too much. Uh, if it's a big amount of money, 30 or 40,000, then okay, fine, then they'll get the FBI involved and then maybe they can get uh, some other people involved. Uh, so as the bigger the money, the more they're going to be interested to try and get some money back for you. If you heard about uh, how Norwich had a problem, Norwich had one of their uh, town employees got an email and they thought it came from the uh, select board, and from the, the chairman of the select board and said, I authorize this person to get paid this much money. And it went on for several months. And they lost, what was it, 200? Yeah, something like that. A little over $200,000. I think I read about that. It was fairly recent in the time yeah. Yeah. No, because yeah. of that yeah. and yeah. the fact there was a municipality, mm -hmm. they were able to get a lot of that money, well, a percentage of that money back. Because they have insurance. Okay through insurance and then through, yeah. uh, but, but they weren't able to, they were able to get all that money back. Because a lot of these guys will come from, from uh, uh, offshore over Pakistan mm -hmm. or, or India, they come from Philippines, and they call in, they can call in directly uh, to the United States from the Philippines, from, from India, from Pakistan, not a problem. We've got a worldwide telephone system, you just dial uh, codes, boom, 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 and you're, and you're talking to somebody in Montpelier. It's very, very easy. And what they'll do is on the phone, uh, it'll say a local phone number on the, on the caller ID. That caller ID, whether you have it on a box or whether they have it on your TV, it'll show a local phone number. Because they'll get an uh, uh, area code, 802, and they'll get some uh, code for a city. And then they'll attach four random numbers. And what they often do is they'll take and put uh, some business name and attach it right to that random number. We had, uh, we live in Waterbury, we had <clears throat> uh, Red Mountain Coffee Roasters call us up. Now, there's no reason why they would call us up. We never worked there. You know, we're not gonna, they're not gonna say, you know, call up Bill and see if we can get something, him to buy some stuff. I didn't have a business, but they called us up. And- um, They also use Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, we had Ben and Jerry's as well. Okay. Had nothing to do with it. when they called us. It was never their name that that uh, they showed on the screen. It was always the business name Ben and Jerry's Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, and it was never the message about uh, Ben and Jerry's or Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. It was always some of the scam. So I really can't trust that caller ID. Uh, if it's uh, some good friend of yours with your good friend's number, it may be them. Okay. And but, but the, the, probably the safest thing you can do is not pick up the phone. Because if you pick up the phone, these scammers all develop lists mm -hmm. of people who will pick up the phone and talk to them. And once they talk to them, every scammer wants that list. So then they'll sell that list for a few hundred bucks to hundreds of people. And in the course of the day, they make thousands of dollars just to have your name on a list. And then all these other groups who got that list, they'll stop calling you. Well, what about when you're, you put your phone on the answering machine, and uh, how does that work? They, 
they um, call your phone. Yeah. And the answer machine doesn't, you're not on it. Right. And it will say call answer. Right. Some phone. of them will pose a question, and if nobody responds, then it's obviously a fake call. Yeah. Okay. And if some of them just have some little uh, sounds that come up, or if they don't answer at all with any kind of a message, mm -hmm. then people realize, oh, this is a machine, and you just hang up. But you know, um, on the West Coast, I was inundated. It was hard to describe with uh, scam phone calls. So what I finally did, I got a new phone number, and it made it unregistered, and everything stopped. Even then, I was been so inundated that I always listened to the, um, the message on the answering machine before I picked up right. with friends. Would say, oh, I have to go through this every time. <laughs> but I mean, I, I said, I'm sorry. But um, yeah. And and don't they when you get your name out of the phone book? Because somewhere I was at a meeting or something, I heard if they see like Helen, um, well, there's a woman that's in the phone book, probably uh, widowed or whatever. Right. And um, I can get her to answer the phone, but. I took it out of the phone book, we kept my phone number and my name. I said to the operator, well, the only people that are going to get my phone number are my friends and the right. people I know. And she says, well, they still, like you said, they have lists, and if they got it from somewhere... Right, they'll, they'll, they'll just generate, they have to they'll just generate the phone number to call yeah. on a computer like this, totally random. Yeah. They don't necessarily know when they, they, uh, they, they said, okay, you'll hit the button, it's okay, uh, one of the buttons up here, for instance, they say, okay, F8, boom, I press F8, it gives them a whole new number, and it says, calling Vermont. That's all they know. Okay, they call Vermont, because the prefix says 802, okay? If they call Massachusetts, now they've got a half a dozen different anger codes, they only used to have two of them, now they got a bunch of them, okay? So the guy will say, oh, calling Massachusetts, they won't know where about just call Massachusetts. It could be called up to Springfield and he called on downtown Boston. He didn't know. So he, he calls that number there. And it won't know until somebody picks up so, yeah. what, the, what the connection actually is. Yeah. I mean, I think mine's less now than what it was yeah. after I get my phone number out. And I don't um, even let my answering shame fly during the day. Nothing. Right. So, as I said, I what sounded to me was that first they just got um, an unlisted number, but it was the same number, so it didn't make any difference. So then I called again, and I got um, both an unlisted number with a new number, and then it stopped altogether. So nothing except for. You know, one day we had uh, eight phone calls come in within 45 minutes, and it was my own landline, my own number yeah. calling me. Okay. So in that case there, we... That happened. Yeah. That was what was happening up at our house. The, the phone rang, and I picked it up, and it said they were calling the same, the real number. Yeah. They wanted to talk to the person. And so I, I just took the call as, we're not calling back because of the fact that she's not waiting for you to call her. Right, right. But they were trying to get right. her on So her if your number is calling into your number, you can easily call the phone company or Comcast or whoever manages your phone number and tell them what's the code, okay? And they'll give you like those three or four buttons to press after that phone number comes in and that will block that number from ever coming into your house. Simple as that. But we didn't, we, we knew that, we had never done it. We said, oh, well, we'll see what happens. Sure enough, it finally happened to us. We get eight times for 45 minutes. So okay, that's enough. So we call Comcast. Boop, 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 and was, that was blocked forever. Would you call Comcast or the operator? Well, we called, we called the number 1-800-COMCAST, okay? And he said, I got a problem with my phone. And we called them, gave the same instructions, but that was it, simple as that. So that's, I mean, that's something you can do. Well, then the solicitors locally, that the firemen and the whatnot, they stop calling because you can call and block and tell them that there is going to be, if they call and solicit you, that you're going to be fine. Right. Like the firemen, they want their, what you want to uh, donate to their yes. organization. So sure. I was able to get, those people were smart enough to find out you're on that list. 
and it's like I've been on going five years. All the ones locally, sure. I pretty much know that. Yeah, I think, but I don't know about these other guys. Yeah. So there's just so many things. Now, the next time we'll be able to get more into individual um, emails, I can show you tricks on the email, whether you'll see one that comes in. I think I've got one here that shows, I think it was in, let's see, let's see it perhaps. Is it in the folder? Um, Is that, the that one from the Navy, Navy Federal Credit Union? No, I guess I can't put my hands on it real quick. But that the uh, I got one from the Navy Federal Credit Union, and first off, I'm not a veteran, so I'm immediately suspicious of that because it says Navy Federal Credit Union, and it's specifically for veterans and their families. So I, they want me to log into this this link. Well, that link on there was not going to give me to the. Uh, Maybe federal credit, you don't get me to their particular yeah. websites. Yeah. Yeah. And everything else, they had the logo on there, everything looked fine, their English was fine, it wasn't, they didn't have any spellings or misgrammar, things like that, which is quite often the case. But when I looked at, when I looked at the address they, they, had, they displayed over there, and then to the right of it, it had the address of the actual sender in brackets. And that actual address said Navy Federal, not federal, Federal, that extra R in there, okay, gave it away. Yeah. That shows me that it was a totally different, totally foreign kind of uh, address. It didn't have anything to do with the actual Navy Federal Credit Union. Right. Right. I mean, so there was a lot, of, lot of stuff like that that yeah. we can. It's a long, that's it. And, when, and it's sad because people, elderly people that don't go to any kind of meetings like this, yeah. they're not knowledgeable that they could be taken and wiped yeah. out. And, they, and a lot of folks will go to the impression, oh, I know when this guy's coming. I know what he sounds like. I know this and that. Well, that may be fine. But all it takes is a little reinforcement. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying, in this case, on this particular program, we're trying to make sure that uh, your, your uh, attitude is, is, is uh, raised a little bit so everybody's aware of what they're trying to do for you and what they're trying to uh, bring in for uh, information, what they're trying to attack, and they're trying to get build a profile on you and so forth. Yeah. It's so. all in the newspapers lately. Yeah. I've seen where beware of, of calls that you're receiving calls that, that you can't relate to, that you can call such right. and such a number. Because even, even the Attorney General's office doesn't want you, everybody calling yeah. because it, it is enough stuff out yeah. there. On that list, you'll find the number of the, for, the, for the Vermont Attorney General's office. Yeah. And they have a great program there, as well as uh, the Fraud Watch Network. If you look on that um, sheet, I think it's on the back, that it will talk about, oh, it's on the front. Federal, the uh, state of Vermont, Attorney General Consumer Assistance Program, 800 number. Yeah. Okay, They've got a great uh, bunch of people there who uh, Within the Attorney General's office, they will help you with any kind of scam or fraud you might want to. So if you want to start with those folks, they're an excellent resource. 